Carrie, Grant, and Tori are tackling the infamous tall tale of blue ice. Can a leaking toilet midair lead to a deadly chunk of ice down there? To find out for sure, cool. wow. Tori and Grant touch down in Nerd Nirvana. All stations reporting with a go, no go. Uh, Roger, prepare to release the geek. Okay. Because this place has a heap of hardcore hardware. This massive fan is the heart of NASA's icing tunnel. It's powered by a 5,000 horsepower, direct drive, electric motor. It has 12 individual custom fan blades for a diameter of 25 feet. It's capable of generating wind speeds over 300 knots. And that's only half the equation. This is the other half of the equation, the icing tunnel itself. The wind comes rushing through here, refrigerated to minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Those are the spectacular specs. And now, to put them to good use. The way we're going to test this is we're going to stick our section of fuselage into their wind tunnel. Does this mean I'm the R2-D2? Oh, boy. And recreate the same wind speeds and temperatures that you would find at altitude. Then we're going to create a leak inside the valve. Let it sit there and see if those conditions will cause that blue liquid to form into a chunk of ice. Remember, there are two leaky valve scenarios the team will test. And first up is the catastrophic dump. We have our model in position. We're ready to go. All right, fire it up. All right, let's go. Fire it up. Maximum warp. Ugh. Sorry, I just made that really We're trying to make I? science cool, dude. Here we go. And for cool science, let's make it so. The fan winds up, whipping up a 290 mile an hour wind speed. Then the heat exchanger drops the air temperature to a high altitude minus 20 degrees Celsius. Our model is holding together perfectly. Then they're ready to pull the pin on the catastrophic failure test. Will the blue liquid instantly freeze into a chunk of blue ice? So this is full tank dump in three, two, one, go! Oh, oh my god! Look at this train! Look at how fast it's going out! That is awesome. As soon as the liquid exits the aircraft, it's ripped away by the shearing force of the wind. And despite the bitterly cold air temperatures, it's unable to form the mythical slice of ice. So behind me are the results of our complete release test where we dumped the entire contents of the waste tank. Now, it didn't atomize all the way because you can see some of it formed on the surface here, but it also did not form one big chunk that could fall on some. Yep, although most of the blue waste was vaporized on contact with the wind, some did form a thin layer, just not enough for a blue icicle.